And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! going on everybody welcome back to another detroit lions video now the nfl combine has come and gone and we have seen a large majority of draftable players test their physical attributes their measurements their mental capacity and in interviews and all kinds of different metrics in order to help draftable teams place them on their boards and after the nfl combine there were a lot of players that upped their stock and there's a lot of players that fell off draft boards entirely so today with the combine officially being over we're going to go over the detroit lions big board going forward for the next month and a half working towards the nfl draft now we're going to go over the top six players on the big board as the lions selected six and one of these six players is guaranteed to be at that spot so going over the top six players looking at who the best players available are what the best fits may be and the strategies the lions may be potentially looking at moving forward could be really important moving through the offseason so with that being said let's get on to taking a look at the detroit lions big board at number at the sixth overall pick now, starting off with the number one player on my big board and likely the number one player on the Detroit Lions big board, Jalen Carter, the defensive lineman from Georgia, should be the pick. If he is for any reason available at six and all of the off the field stuff has been figured out, Brad Holmes should run to the podium like he did for Penny Sewell, like he did for Aiden Hutchinson. Do not care about the 15 minute rule that you have to wait for the clock to round. You make the pick, you run to the podium, you select Jalen Carter at six, assuming that the off the field stuff is managed, right? If Brad Holmes feels comfortable drafting him, then I would assume that everything has worked out and everything is going to be okay, and that there is no off the field reason not to draft Jalen Carter. For me, Jalen Carter is the best player in this class. He is athletic. He affects the pass rush. He affects the rushing, run stopping ability. He is a six foot three, 315 pound interior defensive lineman that in his three years as a rotational player at Georgia had 18 and a half tackles for loss and six sacks. He did not test at the combine. We know he's a good athlete. We know he's strong. We know he affects the pass rush as well as the rushing attack. He is quite simply put the best player in the 2023 NFL draft class. And if he's there, I would absolutely select him. Now, number two, Will Anderson Jr., the edge rusher from Alabama, is my number two player on the big board. Now, you might be saying the Lions don't need edge rusher, right? They have Aiden Hutchinson. They have James Houston. They have Josh Pascal. They are likely going to return John Kaminsky. They have the Okwara brothers. They have Charles Harris. That is six or seven players right there that play the edge rushing position and are likely going to be on the team or are already on the team through 2023. However, if you're sitting at six and there is a player on the board that over three years in the SEC totaled 58 and a half tackles for loss and 34 and a half sacks while standing at six foot three, 253 pounds, being an elite pass rusher, you cannot afford not to take him. And I don't care if it is a scheme issue. I do not care if it is a positional need issue at six. If you can draft Will Anderson at the sixth overall pick, you're going to draft him. If you can take 34 and a half sacks and 58 and a half tackles for loss and add that to your team, put him across from Aiden Hutchinson, rotate him with James Houston, that would be such an elite young pass rush that gets to grow together that gets to mold together and will be together for at least the next three years if not for the duration of this detroit lions build hopefully leading to a super bowl but that trio could be the pass rushing trio and arguably one of the best pass rushing trios in the nfl for years and years to come and if you're talking about a third and long situation an obvious pass rushing down having a front four of aiden hutchinson and aleem mcneil in the middle or john kaminsky or john 
Josh Pascal in the middle, whoever you want that second interior guy to be, and then Will Anderson and James Houston on the edges, you're rushing with one of the best bend players in James Houston has one of the best bends in the NFL around the edge. Will Anderson, a super productive rookie, and Aiden Hutchinson, the best defensive lineman from the previous draft class. You have the opportunity to take the best edge rusher in back-to-back -back classes and pair him with the steal of the draft last year and, of course, Aiden Hutchinson. That pass rush would be so overwhelming to have that you would only ever have to rush four people because you're going to get home every single time time now likely both of those players will not be there so for the third player a player that is likely going to be there but is number three on my lions big board that is christian gonzalez the six foot two 197 pound corner walking away with seven passes defended and four interceptions a season ago at oregon having a 9.96 raw athleticism score while grading elite in agility as well as speed he is a good size for corner, is elite speed, has elite agility, is a ball hawk, has good ball skills, is very good in man coverage, tackles very well. He would immediately come in and be a top cornerback on the Detroit Lions, and I think he is the best cornerback in the class as of right now. He's a good tackler, good in coverage, already plays a lot of man at Oregon, and should be a very natural fit for the Detroit Lions at CB1. And moving on to Anthony Richardson, this is going to be another player that is controversial, but Anthony Richardson very much should be in your top six. He is super athletic, has a phenomenal arm talent, has great, I would argue, the best pocket awareness and best sense of pressure in the entire draft, better than Young, better than Stroud, better than, better than Levis, better than everybody in this class. Anthony Richardson's pocket presence and sense of pressure is that good in this class, and I really don't think he is as raw as most people believe that he is having over 2,500 passing yards having about 17 touchdowns to nine interceptions but having nine rushing touchdowns on the ground that is 26 touchdowns to nine turnovers he doesn't turn the ball over he's a playmaker all over the field yes he's raw yes he's inexperienced there are some accuracy and some mechanical issues but those things can actually be fixed right he doesn't have a slow processor he's just not familiar he's a one-year starter and was asked to do a ton at georgia including going through three or four reads at a time including checking protections including calling audibles on the fly he ran that offense by himself essentially as the quarterback on the field and was asked to do a ton as a first-year starter and essentially in a freshman season giving him a simple system with a lot of tools to work around him something he did not have at florida with a good coaching staff to build a system around him versus forcing him to fix the broken system anthony richardson can and will turn into a star in the right situation and detroit is the best situation for a young quarterback in the entirety of the nfl he is my number four prospect. Moving on to five, I have Tyree Wilson. Now, again, I know edge isn't really the biggest concern, but you can never have too many pass rushers. And Tyree Wilson is a freaky athlete, six foot six, measured really well. Didn't test at the combine, didn't run or jump or do any of the athletic testing, but we know how athletic he is. He was pretty productive in the Pac-12, has outside inside versatility, can fill that three tech role in a similar move to what DeForest Buckner did with the 49ers and is now doing with the Indianapolis Colts right slide in play that three tech be a run stopper be a pass rusher be somebody who collapses the pocket let everybody else feast around you he is a player that i think would complete the defensive line with the right positional moves and right with the right personnel changes and i think he would be a very good pick at the fifth overall selection not my top edge rusher not my top defensive lineman but if you're talking at five and jalen carter will anderson and even christian gonzalez has gone at five I think Tyree Wilson would be a great selection for the Lions at the sixth overall pick. And then the sixth guy on the board is Devon Witherspoon. Now, Devon Witherspoon is a little bit undersized, I believe, measuring it at just 5'11 at the combine and not doing any of the athletic testing due to injury. But his arms are incredibly long. His hands are a really good size for a cornerback. And for a guy who allowed a single yard in over 100 reps of press man coverage, enough cannot be said about Devon Witherspoon. He allowed a 25 passer rate meaning if they spiked the ball every single play they'd have a better passer rating than if they were to target him on a play had 14 passes defended and three interceptions a season ago phenomenal production for the cornerback from illinois and is incredibly physical i think is the hardest hitting cornerback in the draft is the best press man corner in the draft maybe not the best pure man 
but one of the best cover corners in the class. He is sticky. He is long. He has ball skills. He has the right mentality to be an NFL cornerback. The only real concerns are a little bit with his size and durability at the next level, but it wasn't a problem for him in college. Really wasn't a problem. I don't see it being a problem going forward into the NFL, but he is the sixth player. If the Lions walk away with any of these six guys, they are walking away with a superstar in the making. Obviously, we know Jalen Carter. We know Will Anderson. We even know a little bit about Tyree Wilson. But if they walk away with a top cornerback in this class, a top defensive lineman, or a top edge rusher, they are going to be walking out of the first round with a high grade from me and many other people. And sitting at the sixth overall pick, likely seeing at least three quarterbacks go in the top five, there's a good chance that one of these top players will fall to the Detroit Lions, being, again, another steal from Brad Holmes, the best drafter in the NFL. So with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know down in your comments below what you think. What are your top six players right now? What are your top five? What are your what is your top six big board going in to the NFL draft at this point? Obviously, a lot can change with free agency, but just as of right now, team if the team stayed the same. Where would your players be? What players would you mock to the Lions? And where does your big board stand? I'd be very curious to you guys think. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time. And as always, go Lions.